Hey guys, welcome back to Andy's Dinosaur Reviews, and today we are going to take a look at yet another of these Beasts of the Mesozoic Ceratopsian series figures, because we have just a ton of them currently to get reviewed up here on the channel, as there were quite a few in the line. I believe there are 11 total. I've already reviewed three, so we're doing pretty well, I guess. But you can see an incredible image here of the species right on the front of the box, as well as, of course, the title of the species, which quite clearly is Styracosaurus. And this is one that I think a lot of people were really looking forward to. You can get a kind of a preview of the figure right there that's sitting within the box. It looks very large in comparison to the last few that I have reviewed as they were a little bit smaller. But then taking a look here at the back, again, we have a sneak peek of the collectible card inside, some information on the species, and then a checklist over here of a few of the different species included within the line so really psyched to get this one out this is one that i as well was really looking forward to so let's go ahead and break this out of the box right now so as usual we have the really nice card in here as well as the tail assembly but that card is beautiful such a really cool image of the styracosaurus looks like he's kind of out on a ledge or something along those lines i love the fact that they include these cards such a really cool idea on the part of Beast of the Mesozoic. And then back here on the back, we have an image of the actual figure itself looking fantastic. And then, of course, some information on the Styracosaurus down here underneath. Really, really cool. Very nice, high quality cards. And they actually also come numbered, which I did not notice with the last few reviews, but they do have numbers on them as well, which is really cool. And then we have our Styracosaurus right there. And Talk about a striking looking ceratopsy, and that is about as striking looking as it probably is going to get. That is a really, really nice looking figure overall, both sculpt and paint. Styracosaurus is one of probably the more notable ceratopsians out there. It's had a lot more attention on it than some others, I guess. It's pretty close in popularity, I'd say, to Triceratops. So it's really nice to have this very cool, very accurate, articulated version here from the Beast of the Mesozoic line with such an incredibly cool and unique looking paint scheme. But I am really psyched to get a closer look at this one for sure. So let's go ahead and do that right now. Starting up here at the head sculpt of our Styracosaurus, you can see that the skin texture is overall absolutely gorgeous and actually kind of different than quite a few of the previous Ceratopsians. They just feel like the skin texture up here on the upper part of the head just has a little bit of a different look, a little bit of a different appearance. And I actually quite like that just really making sure that this looks a little more unique, a little different than the previous Ceratopsians did as far as the scale detail and the skin texture. But once you come to the lower jaw, you could see a beautiful appearance to the skin texture down here, as well as just a little bit of really subtle blue that shows up here on the lower jaw. But you can also see a really nice dry brushing that's been applied to the lower jaw to bring that scale detail out perfectly and also in very realistic fashion. And one of the most impressive aspects I think about this figure over some of the others that I'm noticing right away is how realistically painted the beak as well as the horns are. There is just an absolutely gorgeous weathering that you can see that has been applied to the beak area, really bringing that detail up beautifully, but really also making it look extremely realistic, extremely lifelike. Of course, the jaw is articulated, which you could probably already tell, but then again, being a beast of the Mesozoic figure, it's going to be articulated in the jaw, but you could see the inside of the mouth sports a really nice purplish coloration. Again, a fantastic gloss coat is added inside that mouth. You can also see the tongue sticking up there inside the mouth, which is a little different than some of the previous Ceratopsians, as they haven't all had the tongue sticking up back there. Unfortunately, it's really dark inside the mouth, so you can't see it too well. But when we kind of get a nice angle on it, you can also make out the teeth inside the mouth, which are painted. So, again, incredible work. Even in the areas like that that you can't see all that well, they make sure they go the extra mile on every aspect of the figures. But you can again see exactly what I was talking about with that really nice kind of weathering to the horn right here, just like with the beak, but you can see how beautiful it looks up here on the horn. Nice tones of color. You can actually see quite a few different variations of color have been included and applied to the horn right there. And you can also see actually really nicely over here. And you can also see again some nice dry brushing, but that really, really looks about as legit and about as realistic as a horn can get, I think, on a Ceratopsian. And you can see that same type of a uh, paint 
application up here on the top of the horns up here on the frill of the Styracosaurus. Again, those trademark horns up on the top of the frill. They look incredible the way they've been painted. And again, extremely realistic. And I also love how they transition on the tips to a black coloration like a lot of the Ceratopsians in this line usually have that type of a black tip appearance to the horns. And we see that again here on the Styracosaurus as well. But honestly, that paintwork on the horns of this figure specifically is just absolutely jaw-dropping but you can also see up here on the frill a lot of really nice really flashy color to the frill as you can see some blues and some greens some yellows and some whites there's just a lot going on really making the frill look extremely colorful extremely vibrant i think and kind of giving me the feeling that maybe this is a male styracosaurus having such a really colorful appearance to the frill but it looks honestly beautiful up there really nice choice as far as the coloration that they've applied there you can also see a really nice coloration to the eye with a yellow and a black pupil but it is glossed to perfection again giving it that very realistic sort of an eye shine that we would see on a real living dinosaur that is absolutely perfect right there in that area but coming back here into the neck region of our Styracosaurus. You can see as we turn the head, you can get a really good idea of what the skin texture and the scale detail looks like here in the neck region. It looks absolutely perfect in every way. Really nice smooth transition between that reddish coloration down into the yellow kind of dry brushing that we have here on the underside. Again, bringing that detail out in perfect fashion yet again. You can also see kind of some of the like skin folds and everything going on here in the neck and just some of the movement within the body right there. Just kind of some of the structure, I would say, I'll put it that way. Coming back here into the body, you start to get this really bright white striping that allows the figure to look extremely flashy, giving it a really, really flashy look, I think. And uh, you can also see actually that it transitions from just this white striping right here to a yellow that then transitions back to the white striping. So lots and lots of color variation as always included in your figures. And you can also see that we pick up kind of an orangish brown here, almost like a raw sienna brown. And we have a very dark red and then we have a very dark green and it transitions in certain areas to like a lighter green and then back to a darker green. So there's just so much paint application to these figures. It's extremely, extremely impressive. Probably some of the most paint application applied to the Beast of the Mesozoic figures, more so than any other company that I've ever seen produce dinosaur figures. And they've painted, again, the figure perfectly with some really nice dry brushing and some nice washes that seems to bring that detail out in a very, very realistic way. Moving down here into the leg, you can also see it transition back to that reddish coloration down here in the feet. And you can see just how fantastic the scale detail appears with the nice dark wash that they've applied to the figure, bringing each and every scale out and kind of making it jump out at you and just looking absolutely gorgeous. You can see the nails are painted with kind of a yellowish coloration, like a yellowish brown, almost like a mustard type of a color, and also glossed really beautifully. They definitely look like real nails would on the figure. Coming back up into the body, you can see lots of nice kind of skin folding, skin creasing, and everything going on. Kind of, again, showing some more of the movement of the dinosaur. But you can also see, again, how good of a job they've done as far as painting it using nice dark washes and then dry brushing in certain areas. They've just pretty much expertly painted these figures. And I really think, actually, like this area specifically, just really shows how good a dark wash can appear on a figure and how good dry brushing can also help to elaborate some of the detailing and making it look extremely realistic because this area all of the scales in this area of the thigh just pop so well and just generally look extremely lifelike and extremely realistic so again kudos to the beast of the mesozoic line on producing such beautiful paint schemes and paint jobs on their figures and you can also pick up on quite a few different tones of green just in this general area of the thigh. Very nicely sculpted out musculature. And you can also see a few osteoderms here and there. But you can again see just a few different variations of green, lighter and darker greens. And then it gets to an even lighter green as we move down into the body. And again transitioning back to that nice reddish coloration for the foot. And you can also see a little bit of a grayish dry brushing they've applied down there to the ankle and foot area along with that nice dark wash. Yet again bringing that detail up beautifully. Very nicely painted nails, 
nicely glossed yet again and then moving back up here into the tail again we have quite a few different variations of green as we lead out into the tail that nice dark wash and again some more nice dry brushing really has elaborated all of that detail beautifully and then we transition to a reddish coloration with a few stripes here at the end of the tail and then you can also see a mixture of quite a few different colors and some stripes and everything up here on the top of the Styracosaurus. So just tons and tons of color variation for the figure. And if we take a look at the opposing side, everything over here looks pretty much the same as what we had seen previously. Again, being an articulated figure coming in a neutral position, you're not really going to see too much difference, but it honestly looks gorgeous in every way from every view and you could see that here looking at the opposing side again there is no sloppiness to the paintwork that I can really see especially in like the nails department you often get kind of sloppily painted nails on a lot of dinosaur figures and you don't see that here on these beasts of the Mesozoic figures again really shining through how much love and care goes into these figures but honestly it is gorgeous from every area you can even see the underside is painted absolutely beautifully in every possible way so this Styracosaurus is a 1000% win yet again from the Beast of the Mesozoic line. As usual with these figures we are completely overloaded with wonderful articulation. We do have the articulated jaw which we've already seen previously and then we have articulation in the neck. We've got it right here and right here so that allows for some really nice posability with your figure especially in the head area specifically. You also have really nice articulation here in the shoulder, the elbow, and the wrist area of the front leg. You have articulation in the midsection, which can allow for some really nice posability in that area as well. Then, of course, the hip, the knee, which all of this is really stiff because I haven't really done anything with it quite yet. And then you have articulation here and here, so quite a bit down here in the ankle area of the figure. And then articulation in the tail, which allows the tail to go up, down, left, right and swivel if you would like it to so lots and lots of possibility as far as posability with your Styracosaurus. As far as a size goes for a length from the snout there to the tail you are looking at about 12 and a quarter inches or about 31 centimeters and then as far as a height the highest point would be those horns right there you are looking at about five and three quarter inches or about 14 and a half centimeters for a size comparison there is mr papo t-rex the attack pack colovasaurus and robert muldoon from the mattel jurassic world toy line next to our beasts of the mesozoic styracosaurus and next to these figures you can really tell that this figure sports some massive size to it for a styracosaurus it is a very very nicely sized figure of course all of the ceratopsians are in scale with each other aside from the cetacosaurus and protoceratops so they are accurately sized amongst each other and to kind of show you the size comparison within those there are all of the other beasts of the mesozoic ceratopsians we have reviewed so far showing you that the styracosaurus is definitely one of the biggest species we've taken a look at the medusa ceratops there might be a little bit bigger or in the same similar size range but the diabloceratops and juvenile centrosaurus are definitely significantly smaller than the styracosaurus but again hopefully showing you this is a really nicely sized figure so this Beast of the Mesozoic 1 6th scale Styracosaurus figure is fantastic, just like I knew it would be. I think that this is probably one of the most anticipated figures from the line, just from a lot of the people I've seen online. I see a lot of people continuously saying that they had ordered the Styracosaurus or that they were just generally excited for the Styracosaurus. So I'm really quite happy to tell you guys that the Styracosaurus is gorgeous in person. Yet again, just like every one of these Ceratopsian figures has been so far, far it is a beautiful sculpt really really highly detailed and they've done a great job i think on this one of really bringing that scale detail out using again a combination of nice washes and realistic dry brushing to make sure that it looks again as realistic as possible with a very bright and colorful paint scheme on the figure again i feel like it's probably meant to represent a male just due to how colorful it is in comparison to some of the previous ceratopsians and just generally what i would probably expect out of a male ceratopsian like this it's really really colorful displaying some beautiful coloration up there on the frill and that really bright coloration kind of continues back onto the back of the body with those nice white stripes and then the yellow and everything it's just a beautiful very bright and flashy mixture of colors applied to the figure and really making it still manage to look very realistic is 
this color scheme on the Styracosaurus. Again, one of the most impressive aspects, I think, is how the Beast of the Mesozoic line has managed to get so much color variation and a lot of really bright, flashy colors on their figures and still make them look like that's probably the coloration that that figure was. So again, kudos to the Beast of the Mesozoic line on yet another fantastic paint job and paint scheme on this Styracosaurus. But honestly, I think that this one is just absolutely gorgeous paint wise and the way they've applied so many different tones of color even with like just generally the greens you have so many different tones of lighter and darker greens just making sure that you get a lot of bang for your buck in your figure again the sculpt fantastic the paint fantastic the articulation incredible allowing just tons of possibilities as far as posing your figure and each and every one of the beasts of the mesozoic figures in general but that's one thing that i I think everybody is really, really happy about with this line is just having so many different areas of articulation allowing for some dioramas to be created that you otherwise would not have an opportunity to create and having just generally articulated dinosaur figures is probably like the coolest thing ever and these are pretty much the ultimate articulated dinosaur figures so this Styracosaurus just like each one of these figures so far is an absolute win and a high high recommendation from me so if you would like to pick this up I will include a link in the description to Creative Beast Studios website where you can place an order for this right now as it should be in stock since of course all of these are the first wave that just recently started to ship so you should have no problem getting a hold of this Styracosaurus so I will include a link in the description to where you can purchase this on Creative Beast Studios website so make sure you do in fact pick this up and make sure you also like comment and subscribe and I will see you in the next review thanks for watching